How does house hacking work? Would you explain that to me, please? Absolutely. So house hacking is basically finding a way your primary residence is the house that you live in. Okay. House hacking is finding a way to generate income from your primary residence. John Brodeen, feeling all special today. How yeah. are you today, man? Good, good. Good. You got you? big plans for the weekend? Um, Let's see. I think we're just relaxing. We had a lot of stuff going on last weekend. Mm, oh, yeah. Um, Easter. We'll see. Stuff always comes up, though. Mm -hmm. How are the holidays now since you have a little baby it's on board? It's a little bit more fun, actually. Yeah, yeah it is, isn't yeah, it? I do like and, that. And, you know, you go to mom and dad's house or wherever you go, it, it's not like you get stuck holding the kid the whole yeah, time because no. everybody wants a piece. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. I love it. <laughs> oh, it is it's a lot so much more fun. fun. It's fun to see how happy it makes them, too. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, you know, uh, these kids are just sponges. Yeah. And, you know, and you... It, I, it's so fun just to watch their face with mm -hmm. everything they do at this age because they're just soaking it all in. Oh, but, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, maybe we should start a new podcast. Uh, John Brodine, baby expert. Yeah, yeah. You think that'd go over good? I don't know if I could be called the baby expert. Okay. Real estate expert, yeah, but baby expert, not not yet. Getting right. there. Um, you know, John, throughout um, our, our podcast and things, I have heard this term, and I don't know if we've ever talked about it, but I've heard the term house hacking. Yes. House hacking. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that could mean in my brain a billion things, but yep. how does house hacking work? Would you explain that to me, please? Absolutely. So house hacking is basically finding a way. Your primary residence is the house that you live in. Okay. House hacking is finding a way to generate income from your primary residence. Why is this so valuable and so important? Well, for people who want to become real estate investors and accumulate a portfolio of, let's say, rental properties, um, the biggest hurdle is when you're going to buy a rental property that's exclusively a rental property, you have to put 20% down. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's that's a big hurdle for somebody to get to. to you know, maybe they live in a home and they need to save up 20% to buy that next one. They were able to buy their home with 3.5% down, but now for this next one, they've got to accumulate you know, 20%, sure. which mm -hmm. is a big hurdle. So a way for people to get started as an investor and begin building their portfolio is to buy a home that they're going to be able to generate income from, rental income. Uh, this could mean, um, and this usually works a little bit better for young people who don't have families. Uh, I will say that mm -hmm. ahead of time. It's it's great for young people um, or, or single people. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to find, so with a, primary residence loan, like the typical type of loan that any home buyer is going to use. Uh, you can put a small amount down. You can actually buy up to a four unit property with that loan. Oh, okay. So house hacking would be, uh, if you go with a small multifamily property, it would be rent, say buying a duplex or a fourplex, mm -hmm. living in one of the units and renting the other units out. So you have to live in one of the units. So. You have to okay. live in one okay. of the units for at least a year. Okay. So, um, the way that somebody's going to do this, it, the, it's, awesome in two ways because you're building equity in this property by paying the loan mm -hmm. um, and it's also going to subsidize your living expenses so your housing cost each month is much much less because your rent kind of offs the rent that's coming in is offsetting your house your payment on this property sure um, so you're able to save more money for the next property much faster um, meanwhile, you're building equity in this property and hopefully it's appreciating and the market's going up. Mm -hmm. You can even fix them up and get the rents up as you go along, right? Live right. in one unit, fix it up while you're in it, then rent that one out, move into one of the more rundown oh, sure. units, fix yeah. that one up. Um, you can even do this with a single family home. So you could take a single family home and you could live in it with, let's say you get a five bedroom home, you uh -huh. live in it with four of your friends, you rent the bedrooms out for 300 bucks each. Sure. And now you're basically just living for free and you're uh, only paying the utilities on the home or you're paying a very small yep. portion. In your own house. In your own house, mm -hmm. yep. Um, so if that's awesome, if you're friends with the people and you don't mind kind of losing a little bit of privacy, if you prefer a little bit more privacy, a small multifamily like a duplex all the way up to a fourplex is gonna be a little bit nicer because then you can have your own unit in that property and have your own privacy. You're not sharing bathroom, you're not sharing right. kitchen, nothing like that. You could even rent out other places on Airbnb within your property. You could even rent out rooms on Airbnb inside your property. Or if what you're, you go out of town a lot, while you're out of town, you rent out the whole house on Airbnb. Sure. Short-term rental. Um, you know, there's mid-term rental. Short-term and mid-term rentals are a lot more work, but they also get a lot more rent per month. Um, you know just the nature of short-term and mid-term rentals. So the reasons, yeah, the reasons this is so awesome for an aspiring investor is first off, it cuts your costs down of living. 
Um, that's the most important thing. And you're getting a chance to own property, build equity, have it appreciate, getting loan pay down. You know, when you don't have a ton of cash and you can get, get into it with that small down payment, what I see some people do is they will buy the first one. Maybe they buy a fourplex with their first property. They rent out three of the units, live in one of them, live in it for a couple of years. Then they buy another fourplex. They rent out all four units of the first one. They rent out three of the four units on the second one. And they continue to use this method to build up a portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, the you know There's going to be slightly more risk once you have a number of these because you might not have that much equity since you're putting low down payments on them. And your payments are going to be a little bit higher than if you were to do 20% down um, just because a lower down payment means you're going to have a higher loan amount sure. and a higher payment. But um, I would encourage anybody who wants to become a real estate investor, um, you know, you maximize your income this way. You're able to save more of your income and build more net worth through owning more properties this way. And it's amazing. You know, um, have you ever had a roommate? Yes. Besides yeah. your wife. Besides my wife, yes. Uh, and, and it's been you know, a long time. But yeah, yeah, and a lot of people are like, well, gee, you know, I'm awfully picky and I snore a lot and blah, blah, blah. But um, two times in my life I had roommates yep. and, and friends, um, and they worked out really well, Yeah. Um, actually. Yeah. Um, I was amazed yeah. at, at how good <laughs> it worked out. But that's just another one of the options out there for yeah. you. And obviously, you know, if you really want to get ahead, there's going to have to be some sacrifices, especially sure. at the beginning. And if you're looking for what sacrifices can I make to get ahead, mm -hmm. and specifically in real estate investing, because it's not easy to um, even get that. There's that barrier to entry of real estate investing where you have to have some money to become a real estate investor, especially mm -hmm. to develop, you know, develop a portfolio of a number of different properties. Um, and so this is a sacrifice you can make up front that's going to benefit you so much more down the road and help you really get a great start. Are you a pet person in my rentals? Yes. Yeah, I do a well, lot. I'm wondering, of pets. First, do you have any of pets of your yes, own? Yes. Yeah, I have a, a French bulldog named Norman. Oh, that's so, right. I yes. forgot about yeah, Norman. Norman. Now, rentals? Do you allow pets? I do. Uh, I charge a thirty dollars per pet per month mm -hmm. pet fee. Sure. Um, and I charge a uh, three hundred dollars per pet non-refundable pet deposit. So okay. I have had situations where I've had to tear out all the carpets. Oh, sure. The pets sure. them before. Mm -hmm. It does happen. But so many tenants out there have pets now. Yeah. Um, if you have a you know a no pet policy. Um, you're ruling out a lot of tenants. And you are. You especially are. the type of properties that I own is they have nice yards mm -hmm. and they, you know, it's they're nice twin home units. Sure. So, um, you know, typically they have, you know, they're four bedrooms each, all of my units. Okay. So, um, you know, it's typically families and it's pretty normal for a family to have a pet. Right. I, I do right. cap it at two pets maximum. Yeah. Because I think once you once you get beyond that, if you have three big dogs, the it gets pretty soon you don't have a nice yard anymore. Yeah, and the damage they can do to the property I've seen mm. it firsthand. Yeah. Um, it's like my but, yard. It's not a yard, it's a dog pasture. Yeah. I know how that goes, especially this time of year. Oh yeah, just yeah. wait for another. I want to go weeks. walking around there in nice shoes. No, no, oh boy. <laughs> so you know the house hacking thing. There's probably a lot of people out there that are like, "Well, oh, geez, you know, I really need some more money. I'd love to make almost almost like another income." Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can do that. You you could go buy a duplex, a fourplex, or you could also fix up your basement. Yep. Or or things like maybe you have a big enough house. Maybe you can kind of separate and go with a different entryway there yep. there's a many many ways to do this yeah you can look for like they're probably built in like the 50s and 60s a lot of those ranches there's a lot of them on the north end of grand forks mm -hmm. and um, some in kind of the middle of grand forks uh what you look for is you look for a property that has a front door yep and then it has a side door as well usually yep. that side door when you walk in that side door it goes straight down in the basement yep so you if your zoning permits it you could create build a wall and another door because mm -hmm. usually that side door that enters the house and go either way straight down the steps. Yep. Usually the kitchen is right off of that. It's going to yep. be a galley style kitchen. Mm -hmm. You build a door there, you put another wall and another lock and then you put another door sure. and another lock going down in the basement. Yep. Um, or just separate off the basement apartment because usually you need to have a shared laundry. So you maybe yep. have shared laundry at the bottom of the steps. You put a kitchen in down there. You've got a bathroom down there, a bedroom. And now you've just turned a single family home into a duplex, you know, and if you want to really sacrifice and getting a nice reward mm -hmm. you know you could live in that basement um 
apartment if it's just you sure yeah and you could rent that main floor out if it's three bedrooms rent it out for you know nine hundred thousand dollars a mm-hmm. month depending on how nice it is and cover the majority of your payment um and you know if you do things right like i've done this before install a second um electrical panel have an electrician install a second second electrical panel mm-hmm. and a second meter socket have your power company come out put a second meter in it run the basement off of electric baseboard heat yep and run the main floor off of the gas forced air furnace and the central air conditioning mm-hmm. now you've just separated the utilities so that your tenant can pay their own utilities and you're only paying a small portion of the utilities for the home the only portion that you're using so um you know i bought a home that was like this and had it as a rental i've sold it since but uh-huh. um yeah i i never lived in it i bought it strictly as a rental property sure but this was sure. the exact setup that this property had so if anybody's thinking about doing this maybe doing a little house hacking yes uh yeah. d- d- are you the guy to talk to? I know a lot about. This, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I'm. It's still if they're looking for these rental properties, and it's a great way to get rolling as far as a income potential income. Yes. Um. Why not get yeah. a hold of your, you know, your your realty expert? It's yeah. like, well, I'm not just looking for me. Yeah, it's you know? a gr- great plan for somebody trying to get off to an awesome financial start. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows you to accumulate money so much better, and your income goes so much farther by reducing your housing cost, and you're able to save more money. And if you live frugally, you can save a ton of money doing this, even if you're not on a crazy high income. Mm-hmm. So Now, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot here, but our inventory, is it looking okay for, for things like this it's for low. if you wanted to do some house hacking? Yeah, there are some options available and more stuff will hit the market in these upcoming months. Um, inventory is low, but you need to think outside the box. So it could be there's no duplexes available. But I've got four buddies that I live with right now, and we rent a place together. Mm -hmm. And so look at some five-bedroom homes. Um, You know, it could be looking at those single-family homes that you could convert into a duplex. Um, Think outside the box and or be patient. Wait for the right duplex to hit the market. Wow. Learned a lot again today, yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's like you should be, you should teach this like Realty 101 at <laughs> yeah. UND or something. But um, uh, I wish you a great weekend, John. Yeah, and uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of Realty Expert John Brodeen, how do they do that? Yeah, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, check me out on Facebook, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn. I'm everywhere. Um, learn about real estate that way. If you want to become a client or you want to ask me questions, I'm always able to be called, texted, 701-213-5428. Reach out to me. Have yourself a wonderful weekend, my friend. You too, John. Thank you. All right, there we go. That's your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast, your Friday edition with your realty expert, John Brodeen. You know what? If you're thinking about buying a house and doing a little house hacking, get a hold of them. Until Wednesday, have yourself a great day and a great weekend.